Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our weekly update. Uh, I hope that you're able to be with us this last Sunday for the summer celebration out at Cary Blake Park. We had just a fantastic morning. It was a beautiful day. The weather was great. Uh, the music was wonderful. Uh, the, the meal afterwards, Chuck Bishop and his crew did such a great job on the sandwiches. And it was just a great time of fellowship. So uh, if you missed it this year, be thinking about it for next year. Don't miss it. It's the last Sunday of August that we do that summer celebration every year. But we really had a great time. Uh, let me share a couple photos of the day. We got more than one. We got two. First one I want to share is this one. Yes, indeed. As of Monday afternoon, the new storage building is now completed. And this is behind the chapel. And so staff today did a walk around and looked at that, looked at where the space has been designated for different ministries. And uh, it's going to be really nice to get some things moved in there and free up some other space in our buildings. This has been a super busy week around here in terms of construction projects, remodel projects. That building got put up finally. And this is also the week that we have been getting the main auditorium re-roofed. In fact, during the course of this recording, you might hear some noises like uh, generators running or some thumping. That's because they're working up on the roof, even as I speak, finishing up that job. But uh, that was one of those jobs that once they got into it, we found there was a lot more to be done than we thought. We knew we had some leaks. We knew there were some bad places to be fixed. Once they got the roof ripped off, they discovered that there were a lot of places that needed to be fixed. So the cost went up, uh, no surprise, but um, very thankful God has provided that we had the money to take care of that and uh, they're going to get that roof all finished up. So that's going on, uh, should be done by Sunday. Speaking of Sunday, we'll be wrapping up this series I've done this summer uh, called The Walk, A Journey Through First John. And so the morning service will be at 10 o'clock and I hope that you can join us for that. It's been a great series. Looking forward to wrapping that up this week. And reminder, this is Labor Day weekend, and on Monday, the church office is going to be closed for the holiday. So if you've got church business you gotta take care of, you can come in and do it on Tuesday, but we are gonna be closed on Monday for Labor Day. Then, coming up here real quick, youth group is starting up again on Tuesday night, September 6th. Middle school at 6 p.m., high school starting at 7.45. So if you've got kids that are part of the youth group, let them know that youth group is starting up again on September 6th. Beginning on Sunday, September 11th, we'll be starting this series called Rooted. And uh, Rooted is not just about the Sunday morning teaching series. I will be teaching on this topic about how do we become rooted in our relationships with God, our relationships with each other, and in finding what God's purpose is for our lives. So I'll be teaching on that, but that goes hand in hand with a small group experience. Uh, almost all of our small groups now uh, are part of the rooted journey that will be starting up that week. And so what I'll be speaking on on Sundays will be the same topics that the groups will be looking at in their small group time the week after. And the point of this series isn't just to get us to go through some material. The point of this is to have us actually begin to put into practice some of the rhythms that we should all be living with as followers of Jesus. So if you're not already in a small group, if you haven't gotten signed up, I hope that you will. Uh, Pastor Lance just told me yesterday that there are eight new small groups that are starting up because of Rooted, which means that we've grown from 18 to 26 life groups and he said that means we've moved from having openings for 280 people to 400 people. So if you're not in a life group yet, I want to strongly encourage you this fall to take this step and get involved in a small group. We have them meeting all different days and times. In fact, Pastor Lance will be leading one of these groups Sunday morning at 9 a.m. in the chapel. So if weeknights are not good for you, you could join that group Sunday mornings, 9 a.m. in the chapel. And I should say that that number of people, those small groups, that doesn't include the women's ministry group. Uh, I checked today and they have 114 ladies that are signed up for their midweek study. There's both a Tuesday night study and a Thursday study. And ladies, if you haven't got signed up yet, you need to do that right away. 
Uh, in fact, Marie said it'd be great if there are more people that want to join the Zoom group. Right now, 18 of those ladies are joining via Zoom, and there's plenty of room if you would like to join remotely as well. Okay, speaking of September 11th, something else that's going to happen on September 11th. We're going to start the Rooted series. We also are going to go back to a two-service schedule. And it's, it's good and it's bad. I think we all have loved being on a one-service schedule because it means we're all together. And certainly for our volunteers, it means they're volunteering for that one time on a Sunday morning. When we go to a two-service schedule, it means a double commitment for our volunteers. And it also means that we start to feel sometimes like two congregations. Unfortunately, if you've been here the last few weeks, you'll know that our Sunday morning attendance has just grown to a point that we need more room. And uh, we've looked at all kinds of options. We've been through this before in past years. And we just know that this is the step we have to take. So starting on September 11th, not this Sunday, but the following Sunday, we'll be going to a two-service schedule. First service will be at 9 a.m. And 9 a.m., there will be a self-serve nursery, and there will be some activity boards for kids. So if, it's a, if you're a family, you're bringing the young kids, there will be activity boards available for them, but there won't be Sunday school classes during the 9 o'clock hour. At 1045, we will have a staffed nursery. Also, all of our children's ministry will be going on, and it will be the 1045 service that we live stream. We won't be live streaming the 9 a.m. service, so if you've been watching from home, you still want to tune in at 1045 for the live stream. But that's starting on September 11th, so be sure you are making plans accordingly. Then, September 12th, Grief Share will be starting a new group, uh, starting their uh, cycle once again. And so if you would like to be part of Grief Share, if you have lost someone and you are still working your way through that journey of grief, I would encourage you to come be part of Grief Share. And if you'd like to get registered, just go to the events page on dcchurch.org and get signed up there. That's starting on September 12th. Then uh, I got these a little bit out of order. September 11th, all right, the Sunday night just before that. Uh, that Sunday evening, Jenny Forberg will start hosting a Financial Peace University class. And uh, so if this is something that you would like to learn more about, how to get your finances under control, um, join in for Financial Peace, and you can go to the events page again to get registered for that group. They'll be meeting here at the church. Then coming up uh, that week, they're going to be starting the women's ministry again. I mentioned uh, that they are still signing up for this, 114 ladies registered so far. It is a 10-session Bible study uh, with a video series by Jen Wilkin. And so uh, you want to get signed up for that right away if you haven't yet. And again, go to the events page if you want to get signed up for that. Coming up on September 16th through the 18th, our men's ministry is having a retreat. They're going to be down at the Refuge, beautiful facility. Uh, myself, Pastor Lance, some others will be teaching there. And uh, so guys, if you haven't signed up yet, they're getting kind of tight on registration spots. How do I say that? Registration spots. I can say that. Um, but there's still room for a few more guys. So again, go to the events page or contact the church office and get yourself signed up for that men's retreat September 16 through 18. Coming up on September 24th, we have this family comedy show. And Mike Hickman is a nationally known comedian, uh, a clean family comedian, a Christian comedian, and a longtime friend of Pastor Lance. So Pastor Lance talked to Mike, got him set up to come, and uh, so it should just be a really fun afternoon. And uh, Mike also includes a gospel presentation. So this would be a great way to bring some friends and uh, come to a fun event on a Saturday afternoon. Uh, there are ticket sales. Tickets are $10 a piece. So why don't you buy one for yourself and buy one for a friend and treat them to this. So that's Mike Hickman coming on September 24th, 2 to 3 p.m. here at the church. And don't forget, children, five and under are free. Okay, I think that's all the announcements for right now. That's plenty, isn't it? 
Uh, let's do a thought for the day. This comes out of Matthew chapter 25, verses 35 through 36. This is Jesus speaking. He says, I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. The context of this, if you read the rest of the chapter, is Jesus is talking about the judgment seat. And he depicts God as separating the sheep from the goats, uh, those who uh, have his favor and those who don't. And one of the ways he says that the sheep are identified, his, his sheep, his children, is by the way they've lived, by their acts of service, specifically to those in need. And the king says in verse 40 of that chapter, if you've done it to one of the least of these, his brothers, he says it's the same as having done it for him. And that got me thinking about the ministry of pulled pork. What do I mean by that? Uh, well, at the summer celebration, you know, afterwards we had lunch and we had these pulled pork sandwiches. And Burnett was telling me that she met a family out there who had come from the Seattle area, and they were just over here visiting. They happened to be in the park, and someone came to them and offered them these pulled pork sandwich lunches. They were near where we were all meeting, and they offered them this free lunch. And when Burnett met this family, she said they were so touched that someone had been so kind as to offer them this free lunch. And they ended up giving Burnett some of their contact information, Burnett has actually texted with them since then. They were just blown away by the experience. And it just struck me how sometimes simple acts, whether it's a visit or a cup of cold water, a kind word, a pulled pork sandwich, those simple things that we may almost think nothing of, and yet they're acts of caring for someone who had a need, are things that God can use. There are things that encourage them. There are things that communicate God's love. They open the door for further conversation. And so I want to encourage you, whether it is a pulled pork sandwich or whether it is visiting someone who is sick or caring for someone that you know has a real need, uh, Jesus says this is one of the things that distinguishes his people. And that when we care for people like that, Jesus says, you're really caring for me. So see what you can do today with your pulled pork sandwich, okay? Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for the many gifts that you've given to us, the many blessings that we've received. Thank you for giving us opportunities to share and to bless others. Uh, I pray for this family that was blessed by that pulled pork sandwich. Lord, I don't know their story, but you do. Um, I pray that you'd be active in their lives, that they would know that they are loved by you and uh, that there would be further opportunities for growth in their lives. And I pray that for all of us, we would be alert to the opportunities you've put in front of us, that we would not fail to give the cup of water, to give the pulled pork sandwich, to show your love to someone today. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, that will wrap us up for today. I hope to see you Sunday morning, 10 a.m. for church. We're still at one service this week. And until then, be blessed.